And broadcast video is live. And welcome to the Event Tech Podcast, uh, the podcast where we talk all about uh, technologies to help uh, you, the organizer, make your events better, uh, but also to make it better for your sponsors, exhibitors, attendees, anyone who participates uh, in your events. I'm John Federico, your host and executive producer, which means that I'm the guy who just turns the knobs and posts the shows. Really, Google Plus does all the work because that's what we use to record. Uh, joining me today, joining me actually, uh, before we get to our, our guest, uh, is my occasional co-host, uh, Mr. John Wall from Marketing Over Coffee. Hey, this is like a uh, Price is Right kind of day where I'm like episode five in the studio here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we recorded a, a, an episode earlier today, so John's John's back with me again. I think he changed his shirt just to make it make it look <laughs> it looked like a different day. Yeah, yeah. So th thank you, Mr. Wall, for for joining us. Um, uh, let's see. I, we always have to do disclosures, of course. Mr. Wall is an advisor to Curious and a, and a friend, uh, and it's always great to, to have him participate in these things. And last but not least, uh, actually quite the opposite, uh, he's the reason we're here, uh, is Mr. Mr. Ryan McGeary, uh, CEO and founder of BusyConf. Hi, Johns. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for the pluralization. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. No problem. That's more efficient. That's all. <laughs> there you go. Well, he's a developer, so that's what they do. That's um, right. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Uh, so, BusyConf, actually, our, our second disclosure out of the way. Um, I would have asked you anyway to come join us, but uh, it turns out that, that Curious and uh, Ryan's company, BusyConf, actually have uh, a technology partnership. Um, and uh, we do a whole bunch of work together, which we'll talk about later. Probably better for Ryan to start off by telling us, what is BusyConf, and uh, why does it make uh, an event organizer's or conference organizer's job easier? Yeah, so, you know, whether you're a novice or an experienced event planning professional, we all know that conference and convention planning can be a real nightmare. And BusyConf is the only platform with a unique set of conference workflows that makes that easier. And so let's imagine you need to organize a speaking conference. You've got a lot on your plate. You need to manage the speakers. You need to coordinate and cooperate amongst your review committee. You need to publish a schedule that your attendees can view while they're at the event. And you need to handle all the finances. You need to handle the ticket purchases with credit card payments and discount codes and refunds. And this just makes up part of what goes into a typical conference event. And normally this is handled with broken emails and offline spreadsheets. And almost none of it's in one location. And to top it off, the responsible parties, if you're not an event planning professional, um, it, you know, you might be working with some volunteers and it's, you know, people have limited time. Um, and so BusyConf gives you the tools to publish a call for proposals. We automatically publish your accepted activities into an online mobile schedule. And we also handle all the ticket registration, sponsor payments, finances for you. And it's all under that BusyConf roof. Um, and at the end of the day, we actually cut the conference organizer a check. And so BusyConf makes your event a success and it makes conference planning easy. I like that. My favorite part was really that last, you know, sentence right there. Right, yep. it makes your event a success and planning easy. Uh, yeah, you guys ha tend to have a, a unique set of features. So, how did you come up? What made you? What itch were you scratching? What made you decide that this was the feature set that was going to do it for you? Uh, I, I know that. Well, this is kind of a this is kind of a lead-in, right? Our first, we, how did we get? To, we got together working with with a with the same customer. That's right. Um, with, with a company called, uh, well, now called Chef. Yeah, that's right. Uh, right which was called OpsCode. Uh, and they, so the company's now called Chef, and we were working to put together ChefConf. And I would say they'd be, a cl they'd be a classic example of the kind of customer you like to work with, given your workflow. Is that, is that a good, good yeah. is, that, is that safe to say? That's exactly right. right? They're, they're, you know, they, you can qualify them as a, as a somewhat large conference. They're not super big, but they're not small by any means, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're medium to large. Um, and, you know, they have the people who are running that conference, they work for the company and they do other things. And so their time is somewhat limited and they need to put on a great event with thousands of people and, you know, handle all the finances and deal with speakers and everything. And so, you know, that's where BusyConf kind of shines is when you need to manage all these things and you don't have necessarily dedicated resources full time for this throughout the year. And so we, BusyConf is, is great in such that we are able to manage all that for them so that they can sit back, they can, you know, define how they want things to work, and then at the end of the day, they're collecting proposals, they're selling tickets, and they're managing what's going to go, event, ultimately go into the schedule for their event. Right. So, okay, so let's just, yeah, let's, let's break it down. So that's kind of the workflow is you start with, of course, the event creation and the system and, and all that. Mm -hmm. That's getting a little nerdy, but mm -hmm. okay. Um, and then there's a call for proposals, which you manage. Mm-hmm. 
So I could see that, see that very much being, especially for technical conferences, right? Mm -hmm. I, I can see that. Uh, then there's the review process. Again, all of that's automated through BusyConf. Yes. That's pretty cool. Um, and uh, then you can pretty much, right from there, you can select who the speakers are. So if you've got 20 slots and 50 submissions, you go through and you check the boxes and maybe you update some copy and, you know, you're ready to publish, right? That's you publish right. your speaker list. Exactly. So yeah, once you've had once you have all your speakers through and you defined your days, your tracks, and your time slots, you take the accepted activities and you just dr effectively drag them into that schedule. Uh, and we have something published in iPhone, Android, desktop, and iPad ready to go. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, and I guess well, the thing I found the coolest, um, besides the fact that you work with us, uh, no, seriously, the, the, what I found the coolest is that uh, you have you guys are able to publish that schedule immediately in the browser. So. Yes. It's the same set of data, so really you're you're taking that same set of data from the beginning, which is like okay, let's you know submit your proposal for speaking, and all the way to the end. Once the schedule's done, uh, I can just pull it up on my phone. That's right. Which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, and by the way, that's not a native app, is it? Correct. No, it's all HTML5. It's all web-based, um, but it behaves like an app, especially on the smartphones. Yeah. And I agree, that's a great way to go. So what's your, forget about the fact that that's how you do it. What's your, what's your take on, on the native app versus HTML5 experience? Oh, so, you know, I'm, I'm somewhat biased, right? I'm, I'm much, very much a web guy. But the, you know, when I, we started BusyConf is building the schedule, right? The, the mobile schedule first. Um, we didn't even do the call for proposals. We didn't do any of the finances um, up front. We just wanted to, we started as, attendees of conferences feeling pain while we were attending conferences. Um, we thought it could be better. And so we started by building a mobile schedule the way we wanted to see it done. We wanted to only have the information that we thought was relevant. We didn't want to have a, a lot of extra bells and whistles, and we didn't want it to be a native app because I've always felt pain going to events by having to, one, either find an app in the App Store that's dedicated to that event, download it, right, only to delete it three days later after the event is over. Meanwhile, it's you know, some of, them, some of the apps out there that, that are in this space, the, the companies that are in this space, they do a pretty good job, um, but many of the apps that are actually built for events are um, pretty darn cumbersome for the attendee, right? Either requiring username and password or registration or um, just not being easy to navigate when really at the end of the day what you really want to see is the schedule of what's going on and what's coming up next. And so we built that mobile schedule out first. Um, we prototyped it for um, a conference. It, this was actually late in 2010. Uh, we tried to get the conference organizers on board. Is hey, here's here's this new thing that you guys can use. You don't have anything published yet, but we kind of scoured the internet for more information that they weren't including in their schedule, um, and we kind of augmented it and added speaker bios and speaker pictures on their behalf. Um, we didn't get any response from them, but instead we kind of just reached out to the attendees of that conference instead. And at the end of the day, we had 700 out of the 800 attendees use our schedule, and so we thought there was something there. Um, as the unofficial schedule, and then we kind of fell into well, that was really painful to collect all that data. So why don't we feed it from the call for proposals? The speakers have an incentive to get this data to us. So let's let them control it. They also have an incentive to market themselves. Uh, and the organizers no longer have to uh, hold that burden of collecting all that data and managing it. And it feeds directly into the schedule for their attendees to benefit from. So that's really where we started. And then we later went into the ticket registration side of things. Oh, that's interesting. So I didn't know that's how the progression, uh, you know, how the progression went. So, yeah. uh, what was your thinking? I mean, other than the fact that you wanted a, a better experience, um, I always go there right away, right? So, what was your thinking? Were you, did you think you were going to turn that into a business, or you were just scratching an itch and said, "Let's see what happens"? Well, yeah, we were just scratching an itch, right? We're longtime software guys, um, and we just wanted to solve this problem. Excuse me, that we were having, and. Uh, you know, it, it started as a prototype. Could we do this entirely HTML5? Could we do this entirely just for the web and still make it a good experience for the attendees? Um, and so that's where that prototype started. And, you know, it was really, we weren't sure if it was going to take off or not or whether or not people would be receptive to it, but we were pretty glad to hear, you know, that 700, actually we checked the analytics to see that 700 of our attendees at that event used it. We knew there was something there. Um, and it was just about figuring out what the business model was going to be then, right? Because we weren't even sure if it was going to be a business yet. Um, and, you know, we knew that we had to collect proposals to get the data through. We weren't quite sure how we were going to charge for it, right? Because at that early in the stage of a conference, the budgets aren't always there, right? They don't know if the money's going to be there. Um, and so that's actually why we actually ended up going into the ticket registration space. Well, because, right, because yeah. there's always, if there's one line item that's, that's always available, 
gets yeah. registration. Exactly. Right. Right. But but the competition is is pretty stiff there, Ryan. So oh. I mean, y your feature set is definitely a differentiator. Mm -hmm. But you know how how I mean how do you go in? I mean, yeah, I shouldn't even say this because I know from looking at how it works, I know why someone would choose mm -hmm. Conf. But you know, if I'm going through this list, you know, you, did you see the um, event manager blog? Julius Solaris, he just put out uh, a a little ebook. Yes. On on registration and the list is like you know yeah. it just goes on and on and yeah, most yeah. Of, most of those companies don't differentiate themselves so how do you how do you compete there what do you no, what do you do that's a really great question because we're in that book and there are a ton right we're we're just one line item in a very long pages of pages of of other event registration uh, systems but you know I think you know where we differentiate is the fact that we're trying to solve this data management problem. Um, holistically, right? So from the perspective of it's not just about tickets, right? It's about attendees, right? And it's not it's not just about a schedule, it's about speakers and it's about presentations and activities that are going on. And so when you talk when you speak when you talk about it like that, when it's about the speakers and it's about the attendees, right, you can kind of restructure how you think about solving the problem in software. And once you do that, you start to have some unique uh, choices and some unique opportunities to build out some things that no one has really ever seen before and really makes the conference organizers lives much easier so we focus heavily on speaking to attendees directly interviewing them uh, and talking with speakers uh, as all while also speaking to the organizers trying to build out a great tool such that if the attendees are happy and the speakers are happy then the organizers and the event planners are going to be happy you know that's an interesting sell. I mean that's an interesting pitch because we we have we have a similar pitch, mm -hmm. but you still have to go through the organizer. Uh, that's John, true. Yeah, John, that, what's, that, that, John can kind of test to this because we're going through this issue right now. Right. Well, you you know you talk about increasing the quality of the event, and sadly there's a lot of event managers that could care less about the quality of the event. You know they they've got exhibitors that are paying them, and they really could care less. But um, yeah, so that taken for granted, you know, let's say there's probably 30% of the market that's not going to be just worth talking to. But how about the folks that do want to make a great event? I mean, how do you kind of sell into that? How do you, what have you found is effective in getting in the door? Well, you know, your points are, are all very, ring very true, right? It is it is a difficult sell. This market is a, is a tough one to sell into. Um, so the, the conference organizers that we have the most success with are often the new conference organizers, those that don't necessarily, they haven't necessarily done it before, and they're looking for guidance. Um, they're looking for a workflow, right? They want it to be easier because they, they don't know what they don't know. They don't, they know it will be challenging, and they want some, uh, they want to be guided along that path. Um, you're right. There are a lot of uh, events out there where, you know, they're happy to do to use the tools that they've been using for a while, and then there's another group of uh, conferences out there that they're still using Excel spreadsheets. They're collecting payments by a check. We and, know. Oh, we know. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's it, there's so much opportunity out there still in this market to to enter into those kinds of conferences because they're going to have to adapt soon, right? Um, and they're going to be looking for tools whether they want to or not right now to sell tickets with credit cards and to do a, a call for proposals that isn't over email and to publish a schedule that isn't, you know, a dead tree version um, for their attendees, which is often has to change at the last minute because things get shuffled around. So uh, I think there's still a lot of opportunity. There's certainly a number of events out there that are, are difficult for us to sell into. And so our market, our approach to addressing the market is we're going after the small to medium sized conference organizers for now. Um, We'll eventually we've we've sold into some large conferences. Um, we just we figure that you know the more small to medium size we can do early on, the better we'll do, and the more uh, brand recognition we'll get, and the more word that gets out there, we'll start winning over some of the larger conferences and from the larger vendors too. So. How about the um, so have you got customers because you mentioned Dead Tree Catalog and that is huge, especially uh, and you know larger events that I've worked on, you, you end up dumping hundreds of thousands of dollars into these paper schedules. Do you have customers that totally give up on that and just you know, all the attendees are checking their phone for the schedule and to keep up to date? Yes, yeah, we have. Now, most conferences still have a paper dead tree backup uh, of a schedule, but we've had, uh, I would say several, we've probably had four or five that have gone completely digital. Uh, and those are actually more of the tech-savvy conferences, for that matter. But um, And that seems to work really well, because I, I don't know about you guys, but when I go to a conference and I get that little bag of, of stuff, I usually just, of, of like goodies, I look through it and I walk to the nearest trash can or recycle bin and I dump it 
almost all in there. And I think that's becoming more common. So I do that. Yeah, it's funny you should say that too because um, I, 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 that, cause I always I always look for the nearest recycle bin because yeah. you don't want to be so completely wasteful and have yeah. the stuff just go to the landfill. And exactly. you know, I walk around and look, oh, there's one. Okay, and I stuff it in there. Oh, see, I was just going to say the opposite. The bigger shows I've worked, usually they just drop it on the floor as they're walking into the expo center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People, I, you know, there's some sort of a bit of a- anonymity that people, ex- I think, they feel because the show is so big. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, we we um, you know, we 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 have similar we have similar challenges. You know, we, um, uh, you know, it works better for us in some respects because, uh, with what we do, right, lead retrieval. What the hell is that? Like, you expect you're gonna have like you know this dog, you know, th- this dog come up to you with a stack of business cards in its mouth. You're like, what the hell is lead retrieval, right? Uh, but um, what 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 is a, a genuine testament to to how we make uh people's lives easier, and we actually have gotten business from it. Mm-hmm. Is when an exhibitor says, uh, "This was calls me and says that was a great experience. I want to use it at my next event." And I'm like, "Well, we have to work with the organizer. So could you tell us who that is?" Yeah. <laughs> and then they make an introduction, and I say, "Hey, guess what? Your biggest, you know, exhibitor just called us and wants to use our service." Um, and that happens. Um, and those people probably have a little more leverage than, let's say, your average attendee, right? That, so, so I, I guess what I'm saying is that if you get if you have 800 people. If you have 700 out of 800 people using it, that's a big number. Mm-hmm. But if you have, you know, two or three attendees call and say, "I want you to use BusyConf," the or, the organizers probably going to go, "Well, I don't know, mm-hmm. right?" The exhibitors seem to hold a bit more weight only because of the amount of money that they throw at Absolutely. the event. Absolutely, yeah. But but the data, this like the 700 out of 800 number that you threw out is tremendous. Yeah. And and I, I, you know, that's just a beautiful case study right there. I would. Yeah, think. and the really cool thing is when when we speak to like the app versus the mobile side of things, like the, the web mobile side of things, you know, that was 700 at 800 for when we were the unofficial schedule. When we're the right. official schedule, we see something like 150% of the number of attendees of devices are using our schedule. And that's because people have more than one device. Right, right. right. Which is pretty cool. And, and I, I've been privy to some of the numbers of some of the dedicated mobile app scheduling tools out there. And they're really happy when they see 20% of the attendees use the schedule. And I think that's, that's not a number to be proud of, I don't think, right? I think, <laughs> I, I, you know, I think you really want to have a, lo- a majority of your attendees at least using that schedule, right, or that mobile that mobile app, if you will. You know, we talk, we have this conversation all the time, just in general about uh, the experience, the the attendee experience, um, and even the even the organizer experience. You know, if you ask too much of them, uh, I, you know, suddenly. You, in our case, it'll be it'll be like no thanks, too difficult, yeah. right? Um, but you know, we we just get the no, right? No, it's too much of a change to my workflow. Okay, I get that, no problem. Um, but you know, as you just said, the numbers speak for themselves, right? It's like you ask me to download an app, create an account, you know, wait for it to upload, you know, wait for it to populate, etc., and you get twenty percent usage versus a URL that I go to and I get a hundred percent usage, you know, or or better than a hundred percent. It's like, you know, what? How do you argue with that? Is right. it just impossible? Great. I mean, yeah, I, I I completely agree. I mean, I, I've kind of put my money where my mouth is here. Um, but you know, when you when we go back to the talking about the how sales can be difficult, um, you know, the other challenge that we have, just to be completely frank about it, is you know, in the space we're in, we kind of have to hit the conference organizer pretty early in their whole planning process too, which is you know another thing that you know just frankly is a challenge for us on our sales cycle. Uh, we need to get them when they're making the decision around the time they're trying to pick their venue and their date just before they're opening up call for proposals or just before they're opening up their ticket registration. We need to make sure they know about us then and are have the opportunity to make that decision to, to go with us for the next 6, 9, 12 months of, of the planning process. So. Yeah, we, we, we have the opposite problem. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we have, I mean, I don't want to say that completely, uh, you know, I had a call today uh, with an organizer. Uh, they do they have three huge events uh, at, uh, in 2014. Uh, now they've already chose. They already know what they're using for registration. They're a large company. They have an in-house thing, etc. But they were shopping, quote unquote, shopping around for lead retrieval solutions. Okay, fine. This is a large organizer. They think that way. Mm-hmm. Your average small organizer. They don't even know what that is. Right. All, all they know is sometimes they get uh, exhibitors or sponsors saying, "Hey, do you guys have anything to make it easier for us to capture leads?" You know, uh, and they go, and you know, most of these organizers, you know, huh? Yeah. I, what is Take it? Take a business card. Yeah, yeah. Take Ruffle a business card. That's right. 
they're yeah. underwater with so many other things to think about too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which yeah. So 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 let's just go into that for for a moment actually. So we're allowed to brag a little bit, just just a little. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons actually why the BusyCom curious relationship is so great because we were able to work directly with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, unlike some of our some of the other larger partners that that we have, right? They were established for a number of years and they had already built their API, and we said, okay, we'll support it. We'll, mm -hmm. you know, what are we going to do? Say no. But we had the actually we we had the the great. Um, uh, benefit of actually working with you as you as you developed your API and, and improved right. it. So, uh, you know, it's a great story when we go in and say, "Oh, we love working in BusyConf. Here's why." You know, and it's just it's just click click click, and, and everything just works. Yeah. Um, and we think that's that's critical. I mean, we've gone out of our way to compensate for uh, you know some some of our other partners just because they never thought about things like on-site badging. Like mm -hmm. it was never a consideration. They never thought about it. Um, but in working with you, we were able to, to take that into consideration on both sides, and so it, it worked out really nicely. Yeah, I think so too. And from a technical perspective, I mean, it was it was, you know, I've done a lot of technical integrations over the years, and this was the best integration I've ever had with anybody. <laughs> to be frank, right? I mean, it was it was it worked literally on the first time we tried it. I remember that with our staging yeah. systems, and we, you know, Clement over at Curious and, and myself, we were looking at it like we were kind of in awe. <laughs> That it just went off so smoothly, um, which was always—it's always disconcerting because you're like you expect something to break on your first try, um, but it worked great and it, it held up. So, it's, it's, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's been great. I, it. I of course had nothing to do with that. Just so we're clear, <laughs> uh, that was my my co-founder, um, and uh, yeah, he he handled all that. But yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, you you and he seemed to work really well together. So that was a good thing. So I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about you know we we were talking about just. You know, why use BusyConf, and that's good. And how does BusyConf, you know, compare to to the other things that are on the market? And that was interesting, and and I have a good understanding of that. Um, and uh, but let's get out of all that, the day to day. Okay. Um, where where is this all going? There's there, you know, where because everybody wants something that's just just a little different than than what you have. You know, they don't want this. They want something that oh, – okay, here's, here, here you go. We had a request last week from someone who asked if we could print um, 100 by 100 pixel photos on badges Okay. as, as access control. Like everybody wants their own little thing, right? Yeah. So with, the, with that in mind though, what do you, what do you, where do you, what do you see as the bigger trend in, in this space you know, or bigger so, trend, set of trends? So there's a, there's a couple. Um, one simple one that we're kind of moving into is even though we already are somewhat there, we're collaborative software, right? We allow your whole team to kind of collaborate amongst planning the event. So instead of having to deal with a lot of disjunct and offline spreadsheets and emails or even offline systems, um, you know, having everything within BusyConf to track it through the process of planning is one area so that anyone in your team can pick up where you left off. And I think expanding on that um, within the BusyConf platform is something we want to do in terms of making it even better to track everything about an attendee that you know in terms of the communications you've had with that attendee or even the communications you've had with a speaker so that if you need to take a week off and your, your co-organizer needs to pick back up where you left off, they can quickly see all the communication that you've had with this person or these people um, and know that these, these eight tickets that were purchased were all purchased from the same company on this person's particular um, credit card, and there's one buyer, and there's, there's seven tickets associated with it or whatever. Um, and just to know that this group is coming together. And so when one of those people call in about a question about their registration or what they need to do, it's kind of all tied together. And so it's about that one seamless collaborative atmosphere. That's one area. Um, some other areas involve, you know, things like, you know, there needs to be a, a place, almost like a speaker marketplace, right, for speakers to kind of work together and, and manage those proposals, especially for speakers who do it for a living, right, to make it somewhat better um, and easier for them to either submit proposals to conferences or if conferences are requesting invite or inviting speakers in to make that whole process a little bit uh, more streamlined, especially if they're they're frequent speakers. And then the last part is just like how do you, how do we handle the sponsors, right? How do we handle you know the sponsors prospectuses, um, and, and it's kind of solving that whole problem along the same lines in the collaborative sense, right? Making sure everything's tied together. What kind of communications have happened with sponsors and everything else? So those are some of the things that we're looking at in the future. Um, 
you know, in which ones come first, couldn't tell you just yet, uh, but they're things that we're investigating uh, pretty heavily. And there's, there's one other experimental thing we're working on, too, with the potential to kind of revolutionize the way on-site surveys work, right, from the attendee, like actually getting feedback. And, and not just, like, you know, 10% of attendees responding, like, all of them, right? That's something we're focused on, too. Um, it won't be as granular as a full-on survey, but it's something where you're going to get more people to participate on a yay-nay kind of perspective as opposed to, uh, you know, maybe a 10% return on a, on a typical survey that you would ask after the event. Sure, and we hear that a lot, actually, yeah. uh, that people, you know, there's left on chairs, you know, and yes. nobody fills them out. Right. Um, except those people who had an absolutely, you know, earth-shattering, wonderful experience, and those people who thought it was horrible. And then anyone else in between, you just never hear from. Them. And the yeah. family of the speakers, too. They always have five of them. <laughs> yes, exactly. I thought John was great. Uh -huh. Signed, Mrs. Wall. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. We, we, uh, we, we have similar thoughts there. Um, I guess the the one thing I think we share, and and you know even even when we worked together for the first time, uh, almost a year ago now, nine months ago, yeah, uh, and even now, um, I think the one thing that we we share uh, with you there is the is is data, right? Mm -hmm. Is the fact that, you know, I, I used to say that your event is one big you know hairy ball of data that you need to kind of pull apart and you know and and lay out and figure out what it all means. Um, and I, and I would say that's definitely one thing that that w one opinion that we share. How you mm -hmm. how you pick that apart, and I'll, I'll stop now with the hairy ball thing because that's just getting being a, becoming a gross analogy. But but how you actually uh, pull that data apart and make use of it, that's you know that's where I think uh, you know everyone's still trying to figure that out. Yeah, absolutely. To try to see the trends that you've had year over year or two. Right? You know, we're we're too new to really have like year to year trends with our events, but you know to see how things change over time are also is also really interesting. You know what? Yep. What caused a spike in ticket sales? What caused, you know, uh, a, a influx of call uh, proposals on your on your <clears throat> on your speaker proposals? Um, you know, and, and what caused everyone to get really excited about the event at the, on that day? And then comparing that to previous years is something that's also really really cool too. Yeah, I, I will say um, uh, there there is one particular uh, there's one feature um, from uh, from one of your competitors uh, that everyone cites as being just Tremendously valuable. They love it, and mm -hmm. that's the, the cross event reporting. Yeah, uh, and and they love that because they can see you know month to month, uh, you know year to year, uh, exactly you know who's returning and so on. Um, the downside, of course, is that particular that particular competitor doesn't allow us to write back the data um, right to their API. Okay. So when somebody registers on site. And uh, they pay for the registration, but the bat, but the because the API is in real time, like mm -hmm. our, like our integration is. Right. They have to type the person's name into Curious in order to get the badge created and get it off to leave, you know, so it's ready for leave retrieval. So then they have to get that change report and manually enter those people back into the I registration see. system if they want to maintain the integrity of their um, of their cross event reporting. Sure. Um, but but people love it for that very reason. Uh, we have a customer that does you know twenty some odd events a year that use this, and I, God knows if they'll ever leave that that yeah. competitor because they just love that data. They just yeah, it's, love it. it's actionable data. That's why it matters, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So there's there's something to build. If you could figure out how to get that data out <laughs> and import it into BusyConf, there you go. Then then I think you've got that's that's you know there. You can thank me for that. You, okay. You, yep. I'm gonna write that one down. You can buy me a beer. Yeah, I will. Even better, we can go Maybe to Keen's. We can go to Keen's for, for mutton. <laughs> mutton and bacon. All right. Mutton and bacon. Yeah, we we had our um, we just had a little bit inside baseball. We just had our first um, real uh, holiday dinner uh, at Curious with the whole team. Congratulations. Thank you. And we just went we went to Keen's Chop House in New York City. And uh, it was quite the experience. It's your, your classic New York City steakhouse, but it's not a steakhouse; it's a chop house. So they bring you a piece of, they, you know, I had mutton because I figured if you're in a chop house, you might as well have mutton. And you know, it, it was like I swear it had to be as big as this keyboard, and you know, probably I don't know, five, six inches thick. It was unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> it was a fun experience, though. Fred Flintstone esque. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It was like, oh, who ordered the brontosaurus? Brontosaurus like, yes. Uh, interesting. So, so Ryan, what's uh, what's on the um, uh, what's on the horizon for you guys uh, in 2014? What do you got planned? So, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to build out. So, some of the things that we have right now in BusyConf, I 
internally, I actually see as almost a minimal viable product, right? We still, I still see it as this thing that isn't fully, uh, it's not all the, it doesn't have all the features that are in my head. And so we're going to start building out some of those things to make it, one, more compelling for some, and also to enhance the experience for others uh, to make their lives better, to make the planning better, and to make the conference awesome. Uh, and so that's, that's one area. So we're going to focus a lot on development. Um, we have a lot of work to do on our own sales cycle. Um, that's something we're ramping up now, too. Um, so that's something that's always in our, on our mind. And we're going to start looking into other types of integration, similar to what we did with, with you guys, Curious, but to kind of feed into, not for other lead retrieval um, systems, but to just kind of help with the marketing of the event, right? To tie into, you know, other external services to manage, you know, if you want to run an email campaign outside of BusyConf or anywhere else, then you can do that, right? And all of your data is yours, and so we're going to make it easier for you to kind of uh, move that data around in different systems in real time so that you don't have to do anything manually. You're not exporting spreadsheets and importing them. It's just all going to kind of flow into the systems that you want them to flow into, um, and then everything will be kept in sync, and BusyConf is going to be the, the managing engine for that because we, we, we want to be the canonical source of, of that data. So, it, it, Yeah, I think that's, that's well said, and I think that that's a trend. That in itself is, a, is, a, is an Uber trend uh, mm -hmm. for 2014. Yeah. I think uh, we had our, uh, our webinar. Uh, I don't know if you caught, if you caught any of that um, uh, last month, and that seemed to be the, the, uh, the trend that a lot of the speakers pointed out. Uh, that integration uh, is probably better than than trying to be all things to all people. That's right. That's right. There's still there are still a lot of companies out there who in the event space that still feel like they'd rather just own it all. Right? Yeah. They're either going to build it or they're going to buy it and they're going to integrate it and they want to be your one stop shop. And okay, that's fine. But with all the choices that you have out there uh, today for all you know the various pieces of software that help you run your your business and and, and grow your events. Um, yeah, I think integration is the way to go. I, I think you're right there. Yeah, and you know, even even when we talk about, we once thought that we were going to go into like the badge side of things, right, and managing the badges, and it kind of makes logical you don't want to do that. Yeah, Trust we, me, you don't want to do that. You guys do that. So why would I want to do that? <laughs> no, well, not even that. Like you yeah. just don't want to do that. Yeah, because there's just expectations there that you know, uh, that we'd have to learn a whole new slew of things that isn't really in our wheelhouse, and you know, especially the since the expectation is that they're going to want to see these things printed and delivered to their doorstep right at the end of the day and um, it'd be much better for us to integrate with with people like curious to have that done so yeah actually it's funny you should say okay so they here talk about integrations right mm -hmm. um, we uh, we've uh, let's see well okay so we have another another technology integration we did on the other side right so we have these integrations with the, you know busyconf where we take your data in and then we could of course produce your badges so finally we had these customers saying can you print our badges and deliver them and I was like, I'm not doing that. We're, we're still not getting into that business. Mm -hmm. So I found a company that um, uh, that does uh, customized, personalized postcards. So they work with companies like, I don't know, uh, I'll make it up, Verizon, right? Mm -hmm. So you get off the phone call with the Verizon rep, and the Verizon rep goes into the CRM system, clicks a few buttons, and it immediately spits out a, you know, a, a customized, a custom printed postcard with your name on it and maybe a special offer and the whole thing. So I said these guys, and they had an API. They, I happen to know found I found out they had an API. I'm like, if they could do custom postcards, they can do badges. Sure yeah. enough, we have a service now where it, um, uh, right now it's sort of uh, sneaker net, like concierge service. We we do it in the background, but starting next month, you'll be able to go into Curious and you know you could pull your data from from BusyConf, make sure it's all correct. Um, and then when you want your badges printed, we literally you know you press a couple of buttons, the order goes off. And in, within 48 hours, they get they arrive, cut, you know, printed, cut, alphabetized, shrink wrapped. So all you got to do is open the box and start handing them out. That is incredible. You, That's people awesome. People love it. I, I'm, we thought like a few customers would take us up on it. People just love it. So uh, it, it, yeah, we can't get that technology, we can't get that integration built fast enough. But uh, it's cool. It's actually yeah. really cool. So we, so yeah, we're we're integrating on 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 the intake, and you know, we're integrating on the on 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 the out. Take out. <laughs> you get the idea. Yep. Anyway, on the output. Uh, yeah. So it's all about integrations. I, I think that's the that's the uh, the theme for 2014, at least in my mind. I, cool. I I agree. That sounds great. Yeah. One last question before I go. Yes. Why why is your why isn't your shirt busy comfy yellow? 
So I have a busy comfy yellow shirt. I actually have all the <laughs> colors, right? So I, I, these are ordered from Land's End, right? And so I had them, you know, do the stitch, and I just ordered every color they had. And today is an orange day. There you go. <laughs> a good question. Uh, you know, I was just kidding because I know we were just we were joking before we got on this thing about yeah. how we got the yellow bar across your lower third to match mm -hmm. BusyConf yellow, and I'm like, but his shirt's not yellow, and it has a logo. I, I probably just made it clash. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's right. good though that your coworkers get freaked out when you wear like what looks to be the exact same shirt five days in a row. <laughs> that's right, they do. Yes, that's why you wear black turtlenecks because you know one black turtleneck doesn't look different from the other. It's <laughs> it's the Steve Jobs look. Anyway. That's right. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, appreciate it. If people want to reach out and thank you for doing this interview, how can they find you? So you can uh, hit me via email. I'm ryan at busyconf.com. You, know, you can contact us at busyconf.com. Uh, our Twitter handle is busyconf, and my direct Twitter handle is rmm5t. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if I'm following you directly. I think I'm following busyconf. i got to fix that. Yeah, fix that. Totally. Awesome. All right, thank you. And Mr. Wall, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. No problem. You want to check out the Curious Holiday video. I was just checking. It's already up over 2.4 million views. So <laughs> Yeah, 2.4 million. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.4. 2.4 views. No, we do better than that. Uh, yes, go to, go to Curious. Go to the Curious website, and we have our, our holiday video that yeah. we had done last week just before our holiday dinner. Yeah. Uh, yes, so I, I am one of those 2.4 views. So <laughs> I, I noticed, yes, because I saw the I saw the uh, we use Wistia, which is awesome. If you ever do marketing videos, and it says Leesburg, Virginia, I was like, oh, that's that's okay. me. Yeah, there you go. All right, Ryan, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, until next time, this has been the Event Tech Podcast, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks, John.